Hey brothers and sisters, Francis Santa Rose here. I was just about to head into the gym. Um, I had been praying in my car for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And uh, I was just about to go in and something compelled me to pick up my Bible. Now, I didn't have my regular Bible here today. I have my complete Jewish Bible, which I like this little Bible. And it, it, um, it uh, has some interesting stuff for me once in a while. I'm going to get it up a little higher so it's closer to my eyes because the print is really small. But what I saw was something that was really really interesting that caught my eye. I've been asking for I've been asking the Lord for a word about this time where we draw near to the end. Like give me something regarding this time we're in. And um wow. I opened up to James, and actually a lot of it is what I want to talk about, but this section is what stuck out with me. I'm going to start in chapter 4. So remember, I'm asking the Lord, show me something about this time of the end. About what we're supposed to be doing with our time, and what we're not supposed to be doing with this time. He says, first, what is causing all the quarrels and fights among you? Interesting. I'm asking him about the end, and he's telling me, hey, what's causing all these fights and quarrels among you? And um, which kind of coincides with um, that lesson I did with Catherine about the demonic powers that were coming down and how things were going to be um, more difficult for us. He says, what is causing all the quarrels and fights among you? Isn't it your desires battling inside of you? So our desires. You know, the, there is an interesting verse, and I can't remember where it is offhand. You can Google it. It says, let no man say when he is, oh, you know what? I think it's in James. <laughs> when, you, when you are tempted, test or tried, that you are tempted, test or tried by God. Uh, for each one is led away by their own desires and enticed. See, it's our own desires that lead us into sin. He says, what is causing all the quarrels and the fights among you? Isn't it your own desires battling inside you? Your, you desire things, but you don't have them. You kill and are jealous. And I think kill is just, uh, it's just using a metaphor there. Not so much that people are murdering, but it's, it's, it's a metaphor for you break the law. You're, 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 you know, you're walking against the law of love. You kill and are jealous, and you still can't have them. What? The desire, the, remember before that says, you desire things and you don't have them. You kill and you are jealous, and you still can't have them. So you fight and quarrel. Why? Why are people fighting and quarreling? Because there's some selfish desire in their heart that they want that they can't get. So it's causing them to lash out and fight and to quarrel is what he's saying here. The reason you don't have these things that you desire is that you're not praying for them. Or if you do pray and don't receive them, it's because you are praying with the wrong motive, that of wanting to indulge in your own desires. So this is kind of an interesting little section here. You know, and I've read this a hundred times, but the fact that he pulled this out for the question that I asked him, which was, hey, give me some wisdom about this time that we're in, about how we're behaving, how we're supposed to behave, and reveal some stuff to me. And this is what he pulls out? This is kind of interesting. Let me start from the beginning. He said, what is causing all the quarrels and fights among you? Isn't it your own desires battling inside you? Your desi you desire things and don't have them. You kill and are jealous and you still can't get them, so you fight and you quarrel. The reason you don't have is because you don't pray. Or you pray and you don't receive because you pray with the wrong motive, that of wanting to indulge your own desires. Ouch. That is... That is kind of... That is kind of convicting right there. So if you're quarreling with people, if you're not getting along with people, you need to go back and search your heart. What are your desires? Or if people are quarreling with you and starting fights for with you, 
what is in their heart that's causing them to do that thing. All right. And remember that word that God gave me the other day. Love sees through the fault to the need. You know, there's something in there that's causing them to do that. He says, and then he goes to you unfaithful wives. Now, look, that could be unfaithful wives or unfaithful husbands. Don't you know that loving the world is hating God? Whoever chooses to be the world's friend makes himself God's enemy? Or do you suppose the scripture speaks in vain when it says that there is a spirit in us which longs to envy? But the grace he gives is greater, which is why it says, God opposes the arrogant, but to the humble he gives grace. Therefore, submit to God. Moreover, take a stand against the adversary, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Clean your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded people. Wail, mourn, sob. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers, stop speaking against each other. Moreover, excuse me, whoever speaks against a brother or judges a brother is speaking against Torah and judging Torah or the word. And if you judge Torah, you are not a doer of what Torah says, but a judge. There is but one giver of Torah. He is also the judge with the power to deliver and destroy. Who do you think you are judging your fellow human beings? So I've been um, so many times I will, you know, uh, I would be preaching and I would like, for instance, here's an example. I would mention John Osteen. John Osteen is the, 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 the late father of Joel Osteen. John Osteen was a rock solid preacher who preached the word. He preached, uh, and he is just rock solid. Joel is nothing like his dad. He's completely different. He is his own man. And I would get ridiculed for for being a prosperity preacher because I mentioned the name Osteen and they, they didn't even listen to the fact that I said John Osteen, just associated me with Joel Osteen and then began to rip Joel Osteen apart and try and drag me into a a, a, a discussion to try and defend Joel. Or you know, Look, I don't know Joel. I don't know him. <laughs> I have no clue what is inside Joel's heart, and it's not for me to judge. And I'm not going to say anything evil about him. And I wouldn't be dragged into it. I just kept telling him, look, I don't know. And he kept trying to get me to condemn him. And you know, you know he's this, and you know he's that. It's, look, I don't know anything. I, I don't know Joel. I don't know what's in his heart. He's got his own thing going. I got my own thing going. Don't, <laughs> don't try and put words in my mouth. I don't, I'm not talking bad about anybody. I don't, I don't believe in that. He says, brothers, stop speaking against each other. Whoever speaks against a brother or judges a brother is speaking against Torah. Oh, we just read that. Now, listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, stay there a year trading and make a profit. You don't even know if, if you will be alive tomorrow, for all you are is a mist that appears for a little while and then disappears. Instead, you ought to say, if Adonai wants it to happen, we will live to do this or that. But as it is, in your arrogance you boast. All such boasting is evil. So then, anyone who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it is committing a sin. So if you know to do good and don't do it, that's just like sinning. If you know in your heart that you're supposed to do this thing and you don't do it, it's just like, it's just like you're sinning. It, it's a sin of omission, but it's still a sin. Just because you didn't do it, it's a sin. Because you knew, because God told you you were supposed to go, go do that thing. Next, a word for the rich. Weep and wail over hardships. And this is where this is where it really brought it home for me. Weep and wail over hardship, hardships coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat up your flesh like flesh fire. He says, this is the Archite Hamayin. And that means literally the end of days. And that just jumped off because he, this guy is Jewish. 
and he just incorporates a lot of Jewish words in here. So you'll be reading this thing, and, and a Hebrew word will jump out. But he gives you an index to go look it up. And as soon as I saw that word, I was like, sometimes I just gloss, I just read over him because I kind of know by the context or I remember what it is in the King James. I remember, I know what he's talking about. Uh, I, I know he means Holy Spirit there. I, I, I understand w w when he says Adonai, um, you know, th there's different titles to God. God has different titles, like uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. You know, they're they're titles of God. They're not names of God. They're titles or characteristics of Him. So, and and I know most, I know a lot of them. Uh, but when I saw that, it didn't look familiar to me. So when I looked it up, it says literally it means the end of days. So he says this is the end of days. And you have been storing up wealth. Listen, the wages you have fraudulent, fraudulently withheld from workers who mowed your fields are calling out against you. And the outcries of those who harvested have reached the ears of Adonai Sayat. You have let you have led a life of luxury and self-indulgence here on earth. In a time of slaughter, you have gone on eating to your heart's content. You have condemned. You have murdered the innocent. They have not withstood you. So, brothers, be patient until... And here's where it, here's where it all came home. He's given us a an outline of behavior for the end of days, literally the end of days. As this is the end of days, we're in them right now, he says, do this thing. He says, be patient until the Lord returns. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Uh, and this is, and I've been speaking a lot about being patient. Being patient with people around you. Patient with unbelievers, people who are on the fence pole that aren't ready to commit, people who are saved but they're they they're blinded, they don't see what's going on. You know, there's all different types of people that we're dealing with in our life, and not everybody's going to be where we are at the time we're there. It'd be great if everybody was on our awareness level, but they're not. You know, that's why I always say when, when you meet another watchman, man, hold on to that person. Don't don't lose that friend because it's nice to have people that are like-minded that you can talk to, that you can bounce stuff off of, you know. Don't, don't bicker and argue about things that are irrelevant at this time, you know. It's, it's not relevant whether or not one of you believes in tongues and the other one doesn't. It's not relevant. It's not relevant at this time. I mean, it'd be great if, if we all had the same beliefs and, and everything was in perfect harmony, but it's not going to be like that. He says, so brothers, be patient until the Lord returns. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. He is patient over it until it receives the full, the fall and spring rains. You too, be patient. Keep up your courage. Keep up your courage. What is courage? No fear. It's it's standing courageously in the day of battle. You know, it comes out of that word uh, of stand in in um, in Ephesians. He says, "Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand." That word "stand" is a two-part word. It means prepare for the day of battle and then stand courageously when the day of battle comes. Because turning to run is not an option. The armor of God is like a like a like a hospital gown. There's nothing pr pr protecting your backside. Your butt is naked as you're running away and you're exposed. All right, but you've got to turn and face what it is you're dealing with, with courage, no fear. He says. He says, you too, be patient, keep up your courage, for the Lord's return is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers. Don't grumble against one another brothers so if you're in a chat room if you're doing things and people are 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 being mean or ugly towards other people man get out of those arguments don't grumble about other people don't complain about other people don't don't put down your brothers and sisters or or other watchmen because look nobody's 
perfect. Nobody gets everything right. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get stuff wrong. There's a lot of outside influences. And what did Paul say? He said, right now we look dimly through a glass, but there will come a time when we see perfectly clear. Dimly means we don't always get it perfectly. All right, Paul didn't always get it perfectly. There were times when, when he wrote things and he wasn't quite sure exactly what he thought he understood about this subject or that subject. Some, some of his stuff was like in a question form. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I'm part of this group. <laughs> you, know, you know, God forbid if I'm not, I want to be there. So, you know... The, no one's perfect. You got to be patient with people. Don't grumble against one another, brothers, so that you won't come under condemnation. So when you grumble about people, when you grumble about other brothers and sisters, you come under condemnation. And and look, that's going to be people that are in the dark. That's going to be brothers and sisters that are in the dark or pastors that are preaching at churches that aren't that aren't teaching eschatology they're not teaching repentance just because they're not teaching those things we're not supposed to talk about them we're not supposed to grumble about them you know let's let's go on he says look the judge is standing at the door Jesus is standing at the door. And I remember I saw a vision of Jesus on the edge of his seat, looking at the Father with his hands dug in the in the um, hand rest, arm rest, going, Now? Can I go now? Can I go now? Well, he's he's out, he's off the throne. He's standing at the door. That's that's what I'm getting now. He's standing at the door. He's just waiting for the Father to go. Go. He's standing at the door. As an example of suffering, mistreatment, and being patient, take the prophets who spoke in the name of Adonai. Look, we regard those who persevered as blessed. You have heard of the perseverance of and you know what the purpose of Adonai was, that Adonai is very compassionate and merciful. Above all, brothers, stop swearing oaths, not by heaven, not by earth, and not by any other formula. Rather, let your yes be simply yes and your no simply no, so that you won't fall under condemnation. If someone among you, he says, is someone among you in trouble, he should pray. Is someone feeling good, he should sing songs of praise. Is someone among you ill? He should call for the elders of the congregation. They will pray for him, rub oil on him in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered with trust or with faith will heal the one who is ill. The Lord will restore his health, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. How oh, isn't that kind of interesting? How they associate, how he, James associates sin with the sickness. Therefore, openly acknowledge, and not all, not all sin is associated with sickness. He said, if, if he has committed sins. All right. He says, therefore, openly acknowledge your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now, a lot of people misunderstand this and they will... Um, People will get my email address and they'll still start writing me emails and they'll start telling me about their sin that they're committing and I don't want to know. I, I, I don't want to know. Please don't write me and tell me what your sins are. If we're on the phone together, don't tell me what if you got sin in your life. I, don't confess your sin to me. Confess it to the Father. What he's talking about here is if person A has done something against person B, he should go to him and tell him, hey, I, I, you know, I stole from you, or I, you know, I, I lied to you, or I did this. He needs to do that. But don't tell me, 
you know, unless you've sinned against me, but I don't think that's possible because we don't have that kind of relationship. But I don't want to know what's, oh, man, I don't want to know. There's some things I don't want to know and, and, you know, and I don't care to know. That's between you and the Father. I'm not the one who absolves you of your sin. All right. You don't need, this is not Catholicism. You don't need to go to your priest and tell him what your sin is. You do that between you and the Father. All right. Now, if, again, if you've done something underhanded to somebody, that's different. You know, you need to go make that right to them. Maybe, maybe you embezzled money from, from your boss's business. You, you know, you need to go tell him and repay him. You know, that's, that's completely different, but I don't want to know. Please don't tell me. He says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was the only human being like us, yet he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And no rain fell on the land for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the land produced its crop. My brothers, if one of you wanders from the truth, and someone causes him to return, you should know that whoever turns a sinner from his wandering path will save him from death and cover many sins. So just wanted to share that with you. That was kind of interesting. I thought, you know, that he sent me to a to a verse that says this. You know that this is the last days. This is the last days, like the end of the end, literally the end. And it is because it is. This is how I want you to behave. So, um. Um, take that to heart, y'all. And, uh, oh, we made pizza last night. That was really good. And, uh, thanks, thank y'all who joined me for that pizza. Uh, uh, and, uh, hold on one second. So, apparently, there was another one of those, um, things in the air last night over Russia. The one that happened a couple of days ago over Phoenix and, uh, California. It was really over Phoenix. Mr. BMB333 or whatever it is actually caught it live. He filmed it. And that thing is just that's just not normal. That's, you know that's definitely not a rocket because it's going so slow and it's not going up. It's not leaving the atmosphere. It, wh who, who shoots a rocket parallel to the um, to the horizon? You know, that, that doesn't even make any sense. And then uh, they also had pictures of the exact same thing happening in in the 30s almost identical so what is that thing that would be really interesting father I'd like to know what that is I'd like to know what that is your word says any man lack wisdom let him ask I'm kind of interested if it's something you don't mind me knowing I want to know I want to know I'm asking for wisdom on that I'll let you know what I get so I think that's kind of interesting. We were talking about it last night, and I still haven't noticed. I haven't looked it up. Apparently, uh, China's making a move on its borders. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know. I don't know. You know, all the the all the high watch dates have come and gone. And I told you, Jesus said, He said, I'm coming on an hour that you least expect it. It's not going to be a high watch day. It's just not. I, that's a word that I got clear as day. It is not going to be on a day when you all think. It's a high watch day. Let's look today. So, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. God bless all those guys that are searching for days because they're watching. They're doing their job. They're they're looking and searching. And, and one of these days, maybe somebody's going to figure it out. I don't know. But all I know is I got a word. I know when the word was. I know what he told me. I know who it was that told me. And, uh... I'm standing on that. I'm going to stand in faith because I know how my father talks to me. And we've got plenty of time left. There's there's no hurry. So anytime. Uh, I thought Minister Paul's uh, event horizon that corresponded with uh, Rhonda Empson's husband's dream. thought that was kind of interesting. That old, we're going to see a black hole, signs, signs and wonders in the and the sun and the moon and the stars that's pretty interesting a lot of a lot of interesting stuff going on you know i don't know we make it to 2018 it's going to be pretty it's it's everything's going to accelerate so um brothers and sisters we got our marching orders for the last days don't quarrel be patient walk in love 
Walk in love. Watch your love walk. I'll talk to you later. Bye.